Good morning. We're just going to give folks a moment to come in from the waiting room. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing before the board. Give just another moment to clear the waiting room. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston licensing board and today I'm pleased to be joined by commissioner Liam Curran and commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. And as a reminder, please do mute yourself unless or until you are appearing before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Uh, following questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. We'll begin with the first item on this morning's agenda, calling item number one, Blue Bottle Coffee, LLC, doing business as Blue Bottle Coffee, located at 113 Autumn Lane, has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above. Cafe on the first floor with counter service and seating for patrons, restroom for patrons and staff, kitchen, food prep areas, and storage. Manager Robert Baldridge, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Attorney Tom Miller. Attorney Miller. Thank you, Secretary Green. Uh, good morning, Chairwoman Joyce, Commissioners uh, Tom Miller, McDermott, Clothian Miller, uh, on behalf of Blue Bottle Coffee LLC. Um, as uh, was read in, they're applying for a CV license at 113 Autumn Lane. Uh, I am joined today by Robert Baldridge, uh, the cafe lead for this location. Um, this is a company founded in Oakland whose purpose is to get great coffee to people who ask for it. Um, they have over 100 locations across the U.S., Japan, and South Korea, with five already existing in the Boston area. Um, they are an experienced, high-quality operator who's going to bring specialty coffee to the seaport. Um, this location adjacent uh, on Autumn Lane adjacent to Seaport Boulevard is approximately 1,320 uh, square feet. Um, I don't 13,000 square foot uh, cafe would be probably a little excessive, um, with eight seats inside. Uh, there is no proposed outdoor seating for this location. Um, the cafe will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, we want to thank you for hearing the application today, and we'd be happy to answer, answer any questions you have. Just one question. How many years has have they been operating in Boston, these five locations? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's been a number of years. I don't know if Robert can speak to that, but they've been operating in Boston for a while. Yes, Kathleen, um, our first location was Harvard Square and we opened in February of 2018. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Commissioners, do you? I do not either. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to testimony. Are there any uh, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abutters meeting on July 20th for this proposal. There was no opposition. The proponents answered all questions. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number two, Light Delight LLC, located at 44 North Beacon Street in Alston has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above in one room on the first floor with kitchen and storage in rear. Manager Dan Wu, hours of operation 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? 
Uh, hi, this is Dan calling. I will be presenting for ourselves if that's okay. That is absolutely okay. Okay, hi, this is Dan. I'm the manager of Light Delight LLC. We want to open the yogurt shop located at 44 North Beacon Street, Austin. Uh, it is a new construction that is established uh, last year. Uh, we are located on the first floor. The square footage is uh, near 400 square feet. There will be no seating area. So it's just a, a simple take out yogurt drink, please. Our kitchen located uh, and the storage all located in the same uh, building at the first floor. It is uh, on the rear of this location. Uh, we, the product we're offering is just uh, yogurt drinks. So basically we mixed uh, fresh made yogurt with some fruits and some dates, uh, grana, grana, this like ready to eat simple thing. Uh, we think it's a great idea to open something light and healthy uh, in this neighborhood as it's developing so fast. And it's going to be easier for people to grab a, a simple breakfast uh, as the yogurt and uh, also if someone have some uh, uh, sweet taste and want to be healthy, they can grab it too. So it's uh, relatively simple. We don't have a lot of employees, just uh, uh, you know, plan, plan to hire uh, two or three staff to make the yogurt and sell it at that location. Uh, we don't need a lot of storage as we use fresh stuff. So we will have very uh, regular deliveries from this supermarkets. Um, so that's what I can think of. Any questions? Thank you, Chairman Joyce, any questions? Thank you, you did a very nice job explaining that. I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioners, do you? I do not, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Frank Mendoza, Alston Brighton Liaison with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services here. Um, at this time, I've deferred judgment to the board. Uh, I'm just here to testify to the fact that um, the applicant, Dan Wu, completed uh, in a butters meeting with no major concerns or opposition raised. Uh, went before the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Uh, also, no opposition or concerns raised. Uh, also got the approval of the Alston Civic Association. Uh, the board should have that letter on file. Um, and we did receive one letter uh, from a resident who was concerned about uh, rat issues uh, stemming from dumpster and uh, trash um, collection, uh, which the board should also have on file as well. Uh, once again, at this time, defer judgment. We would like to de defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number three, Lululemon USA Inc. Doing business as Lululemon USA Inc. Uh, located at 206 to 208 Newbury Street. Uh, holder of a common vitular no alcohol license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from on the second floor with a kitchen and a counter to floor one retail, floor two cafe with seating for 40, fitness club and event space. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning. Uh... Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty representing uh, the applicant before you today with me, Carolina Amarim, who's uh, on with us. Um, we, this is a uh, request to basically make better use of the existing space in this property on Newbury Street. They have a retail space at the ground floor and above that is fitness area. They were previously allowed to have a small kitchen and counter. Uh, there is uh, ample room for seating in the space, which they would like to make use of. And that really is the only change here is that that second floor would have uh, comfortable seating for folks who might be between workouts, et cetera. They'd also like to have uh, uh, presentations from time to time, speakers, et cetera, uh, which of course would be a different matter than, than for this board. <clears throat> but this is literally a slight change to their common vitual license. Uh, we did go to see uh, NAB. Uh, we were not required to do an abutters meeting on this one. Um, and uh, we're at free to, happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Attorney Quilty, and thank you for joining us, Carolina. I don't have any questions at this time, Commissioners. I do not, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. As you heard from the applicant, they met with the uh, local civic association in that area. I'm understanding there were no concerns raised. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. 
Thank you, are there any other individuals who would like to testify? I do see a hand raised from Conrad Armstrong. I will ask you to unmute and you may testify. Hello, uh, Conrad Armstrong from 439 Marlboro Street, representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. The applicant met with us and we do, we do not object to this application. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number four, Sané Zerhouni, doing business as Supreme House of Pizza, located at 313 Old Colony Ave in South Boston. Holder of a common vigiler's license has petitioned to change the closing hour of the licensed business from 11 p.m. to 2.45 a.m. for deliveries only on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Is anybody here on behalf of Supreme House of Pizza? Okay, we will take a second call. Calling item number five on this morning's agenda, Fisher College, located at 19 Stewart Street, holder of a dormitory license, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from sixth floor at American Youth Hostels, Boston Hostel Inc. from the first Friday in September to the third Friday in May. All common area facilities are available to occupants. This includes a laundry room, kitchen, game room, lobby, et cetera, with 10 rooms and 21 residents. To sixth floor at American Youth Hostels, Boston Hostel Inc. from the first Friday in September to the third Friday in May. All common area facilities are available to occupants. This includes laundry room, kitchen, game room, lobby, et cetera, with 24 rooms and 55 residents. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning. My name is uh, Robert Melorani. I'm vice president uh, at Fisher College. I've been at the institution for over 20 years. Our main address is actually 118 Beacon Street, uh, Boston. Um, this is for additional housing at our, at our partner, uh, Hostel International. And today I am joined by our director of facilities, Paul McBride, and Aaron Chafee, who's our vice president over at Hostel. Uh, we've been partners, Fisher College has been partners with Hostel International for over a decade, and we've used them for uh, additional housing needs um, when we've had overflow from our Beacon Street address. Um, the numbers listed, uh, the 10 rooms, 21 residents, that was as of spring of 22. Uh, our numbers dropped a little bit with, you know, post-COVID. Uh, so we're looking to go back to the, you know, uh, subletting the entire floor of 24 rooms, 55 residents, uh, which we've had uh, that successful partnership for many, many, many years. The floor is uh, zoned and has been inspected for uh, this usage. Any questions? Um, I do. So just to clarify, um, you previously subletted the space and then during COVID you did not. Is that correct? We, we uh, well, during COVID, they, during one year we did not, and then we had smaller numbers. So we sublet half of the space. So okay. now we're going back to the full floor. All right. Thank you. That's correct. Right. Um, I don't have any questions, commissioners. No questions for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? <laughs> Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number six, Northeastern University, doing business as Northeastern University, located at 1155 to 1175 Tremont Street. Holder of a dormitory license has petitioned to amend the description from a 22-story building, 1,002 rooms and 1,200 residents, to a 22-story building, 1,002 rooms and 1,900 residents. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Commissioner and Commissioners and staff. Uh, my name is John Tobin. Good to be with you, Vice President of uh, City and Community uh, Affairs at Northeastern University. And I'm joined by my colleague, Rob Austin, who is the Associate Director of Customer Relations at Northeastern. Thank you. Do you want to explain to us what you're proposing here? Yeah, I'll do a brief intro, uh, Kathleen, then I'll hand it over to, uh, to Rob. Uh, this basically comes down, we have uh, International Village on Tremont Street and uh, East Village, uh, two dormitories uh, on St. Patolf Street, uh, which is directly behind the YMCA on Huntington Avenue. Um, each of them are existing dormitories uh, and due to uh, over enrollment during COVID um, from uh, 
uh, two years ago, uh, we need to upsize these two existing dorms um, to accommodate uh, our students so they do not live in the neighborhoods. Um, Rob, you want to add anything on this? Well, that's basically, you know, though there are two buildings that we've um, had approval for with regard to upsizing capacity. Um, it was International Village, which was announced, but it also includes East Village. So we have two applications submitted. Thank you. If these two uh, kind of concern the same, uh, the, the same transaction, then I'll read number seven into the record as well so we can discuss both. Thanks. Yes, they, they both are identical and it's basically a furniture improvement. Um, there's, there's no additional uh, construction to either of the buildings. Great, uh, I'll just read in number seven, Northeastern University doing business as East Village located at 291 St. Patal Street. Holder of a dormitory license has petitioned to amend the description from 426 rooms and 723 residents to 426 rooms and 930 residents. Okay, uh, with that, was there uh, any more uh, presentation from the applicants or should we move to questions from, from the board? Questions are fine. Great, uh, Chairman Joyce, did you have any questions? I don't have any questions. That was very helpful. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson or Commissioner Curran? None for me. Thank you. I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on these matters, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on these matters? Seeing none, the board will take these under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number eight, Boston Ocean Club LLC doing business as Mastro's Ocean Club located at 22 Liberty Drive. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Sophia Boyd to Connor M. Larkin, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Is there anybody here from Mastro's Ocean Club with us this morning? We will take a second call. Calling item number nine, Smashburger Acquisition Boston LLC, doing business as Smashburger, located at 545 Boylston Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Jara N. Turner to Rachel Cirillo, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Yeah, is anybody on with us this morning on behalf of Smashburger? Take a second call there as well. Moving on, we will now call item number 10 on this morning's agenda, Backstreet Boston Lessee LLC, doing business as Kimpton Onyx Hotel located at 155 Portland Street, holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Jessica M. Lavin to Edward Wilds. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Ed Weil. Uh, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Backstreet and the Onyx Hotel. Great. Thank you very much. Um, was there, uh, would you want to just present for a moment, let the board know uh, what you're proposing? Sure. Yeah. So um, basically, it's just a simple uh, change of manager. Jessica Lavin is no longer with the property. Um, uh, I am uh, taking over the GM role here and have been for the last eight months. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much the the overall. Great, thank you. We'll move on to Chairman Joyce to ask the manager of record questions. Thank, thank you, Mr. Wiles, for joining us. I'm just going to ask you the four standard manager of record questions. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. And where do you live? Marlboro, Massachusetts. Okay. You just described you have um, experience in the food and beverage industry. Um, are you familiar? Corrected. Okay. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon, do you? Nothing further for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. 
Calling item number 11, BAM Hospitality LLC, doing business as Fenway Marriott Residence Inn, located at 125 Brookline Ave. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Sherrod Chand to Sandra Lewis, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Uh, I'm sorry, that is not correct. It should be changed from Sherrod Chan to Corey Hayes. I'm the general manager at the hotel. That may have been a mistake. Great, let's just make sure we know what was uh, in the application. The information that should have been sent over should have been all of my information. Sure, let's just, one, one moment, please. Um, no worries. Okay, great. Pull up today's application. Uh, we'll have to get back to this. Hang on, I'll come back to this in just a moment, okay? Okay. All right, we'll do a second call in a moment while we clear this up. Uh, we'll now call item number 12 while we clear this up. Boston Palm Corporation doing business as Boston Palm, located at One International Place. Holder of a common vigiler seven-day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Carlos T. Stein Jr. to Ryan M. Origlioso, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Ryan Ergolasso is here. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Joyce, if you'd like to ask the manager of record question. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Other than the manager of record changes, are there any other changes with this application that you're aware of? No, everything. It's just to switch hands. Okay. So are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am. Where do you live? I live in East Boston. Um, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, uh, 13, 14 years. <laughs> and so are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? None for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, we'll move on to the next item while we clarify uh, the previous one. Uh, calling item number 13, Azumi LLC, doing business as Zuma, located at 1 through 7 Dalton Street, holder of a common vigiler, seven-day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Edwin Lack de la Cruz to Taryn Leo. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, um, Secretary, Madam Chair, members, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With us this morning is Taryn Leo, who's the proposed new manager of record. Uh, she is uh, qualified in every way and can certainly answer the uh, chair's questions, and uh, we're happy to stand by for that. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Leo. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes, 755 Boylston. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do, over 20 years. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. I have no further questions. Commissioner Carter and Commissioner Simpson? None for me, thank you. None for me, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will- Thanks, Taryn. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, we will be uh, going back to item number 11. I do see the application was correctly filled out for Corey Hayes. As this does not require an advertisement, we can move forward today. Uh, calling once again, item number 11, BAM Hospitality LLC, doing business as Fenway Marriott Residence Inn, located at 125 Brookline Ave. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Sherrod Chand 
and it should be to Corey Hayes. We will make sure we correct that on the record as we do have the correct application. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? I'm here present to represent myself. Thank you, Danny. Um, thank you, Mr. Hayes, for joining us and for your patience. Are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? I am. And where do you live? Belmont. Um, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am. I have no further questions, commissioners, do you? I do not, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number 14, Facility Concession Services, Inc. doing business as Spectrum, located at 89 Guest Street in Brighton. Holder of a common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Jeffrey Thompson to Michael McCurry. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. Signed on with us this morning is Michael McCurry, who is the proposed manager of record for um, facility concession services, which is the concessionaire at uh, the music venue Roadrunner on Guest Street that opened earlier this spring. Uh, Michael has worked for facility concession services for the last decade plus, having extensive experience in the industry and obviously these types of venues as well. So he's very familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the service and sale of alcohol. He is also a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident residing in Dorchester. Thank you, Attorney Scanlon, and thank you for joining us, Mr. McCurry. Your attorney covered the manager record questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions at this time? I do not. Thank you. I do not. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling items 15 and 16, Boston Culinary Group, Inc. doing business as the Orpheum Theater located at one Hamilton Place, which is the holder of a general on-premise wines and malt beverages license. And item number 16, Boston Culinary Group, Inc. doing business as the Boston Opera House located at 539 Washington Street which is the holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of both licensed businesses from Ryan Cummings to Sean O'Dwyer, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Sean O'Dwyer. Great, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Chairman Joyce, would you like to ask the manager record questions? Yes, thank you. Mr. O'Dwyer, are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? I am in South Boston. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I do, 12 plus years. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zaks or Commissioner Curran, any questions? None from me, thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on items 15 or 16, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on these matters? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 17, Boston Beverages Services, Inc. doing business as Battery Wharf Hotel Boston Waterfront located at 3 Battery Wharf. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license to Delaware Life Insurance Company. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Sano from Upton, Connell, and Devlin on behalf of the applicant. Uh, the licensee is refinancing the Battery Wharf Hotel and seeking to pledge the liquor license as collateral for the loan. There are no operational changes, and that's all. Thank you, Attorney Pisano. I have no further questions. Commissioners, do you? None for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 18, South of Hicksbridge, LLC, doing business as Alco, located at 50 Lovejoy Ward. Holder of a common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license to Eastern Bank. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty representing the uh, licensee. Uh, with me this morning is uh, Paul Crowley representing the uh, establishment and uh, we're before you for a uh, pledge, basically a refinance of an existing loan, replacing one bank with another, uh, the same type of pledge which had initially been approved when the license was applied for. Uh, this is simple refinance and uh, again, looking to pledge the, pledge the license to Eastern Bank and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? None for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 19, AHF Speedway Holdings, LLC, doing business as the Charles River Speedway, located at 1420 to 1440 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for the approval of a management agreement between AHF Speedway Holdings, LLC, and Birds of Paradise Cocktails, LLC. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon, representing the licensee. I believe signed on with us this morning is Marcus Doyle, who is the um, existing manager of record um, of the Speedway license. Uh, the application before you is to record an additional management agreement for the anchor restaurant bar space at the Speedway site for Birds of Paradise. Um, you may recall when we um, initially were before the board to uh, obtain the license, uh, the redevelopment plan for this project involved the full restoration of the Speedway buildings into a community gathering place uh, anchored by a restaurant, tap room and the courtyard itself, plus other um, various small vendors in the stalls at the site. Uh, specifically, Birds of Paradise will occupy the main restaurant building, as previously mentioned, which will have approximately 49 seats inside and 15 to 20 outside, just finalizing um, the, the plan for that. Um, the operators for Birds of Paradise also own and operate Blossom Bar and Ivory Pearl in Brookline, as well as the Baldwin Bar in Woburn. And as far as the concept is concerned, it's um, they pull their inspiration from, which is interesting, the Pan Am flight of the 50s and 60s on the long leg between Brazil and Japan. So kind of funky international flair to um, the food and beverage that will be offered um, for this location. So they're really excited to, to uh, open at this site probably early fall, uh, anticipated opening. Happy to answer any questions or concerns the board might otherwise have about this proposal. Thank you, Attorney Scanlon. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I don't either, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 20, Simon's Package Store, Inc., doing business as Simon's Package Store, located at 2169 Washington Street in Roxbury, holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager of the corporation. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of stock and ownership interest. And lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Paul J. Kim to Carlos Castillo, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Good morning, Secretary, members of the board and Madam Chair. Shabna Mars Masarmi representing Simon's Pack Store signed on with us is Carlos Castillo, the proposed manager. We're here today, as you stated, to um, request a change of the manager, change of the stock ownership interest at the package store located at 2169 Washington Street in Roxbury. This is a simple stock transfer in which Carlos will be purchasing 70% of the stock from Paul Kim, leaving Paul with 30%. 
Carlos and Paula are long-term friends. Paula was looking for financial support to make capital improvements to the property and store. Carlos is looking to join in as a stockholder to help build the store back up and join in this venture. This request coincides with a request to change officers in which Carlos will become president and treasurer and Paul will be secretary and director. Carlos has been in the liquor industry for over a decade now and has multiple stores all within walking distance. He is well qualified and has plenty of experience in this field. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of the ABCC and City of Boston's licensing board. He is a US citizen, Massachusetts resident and resides in Roxbury. There are no other changes to the license, hours or operations or the floor plan. We are happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, attorney, for um, that explanation. And thank you, Mr. Castillo, for joining us. I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Scarin or Saxon, do you? None for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 21, South End Movers, Inc. doing business as BK Pub, located at 4272 Washington Street in Roslindale. Holder of a common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Den Cinco LLC, doing business as Borachito slash the Garrett Boston, located at 70 Pier 4 Boulevard, Suite 270. Premises consist of one room on ground floor with dining area, together with one additional large room in rear, with additional dining and seating areas and bar total seating for 90, together with kitchen, restroom, storage, and office space on ground floor. Monroe, Gavin Mosley, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Morning again, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, and members. Dennis Quilty representing the applicant for the transfer of this license. Uh, with us this morning, Gavin Mosley, who is the uh, founder uh, of, the, um, of the business and is the proposed manager of record for this site. Uh, we are located at 70 Pier 4 Boulevard in the Echelon building, uh, which is uh, uh, about a, directly across the street from um, Ocean Prime and the Cisco uh, Beer Garden down in that uh, stretch. Very interesting building in that it has the, an interior courtyard, uh, which this uh, applicant, this location would face and become part of. The uh, concept is... Uh, created by Mr. Mosley and his partner. Uh, they have two operations in New York City. Uh, this would be their first uh, in the Boston area. Mr. Mosley is a Boston native and uh, delighted to be back uh, in his hometown in the very exciting Seaport uh, uh, District. The concept includes a um, uh, street uh, food, borrachito, taqueria, uh, traditional Mexican, um, which will be full service, uh, which will be um, the, the front, if you will, of the premises and then behind uh, a um, kind of a speakeasy oriented um, bar with further seating and, and restaurant space as well. So it's two concepts in one and very successful where they are uh, in New York and they're extremely uh, excited and looking forward to being here in Boston. Uh, we have um, gone before the Four Point Neighborhood Association, and we have conducted with Ms. White, who's on this morning, uh, Mayor's Office of Butters meeting. Um, we answered all the questions. I think it's people are, are excited to see this concept mm -hmm. come uh, to the area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we're certainly happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Um, I just lost sight of Mr. Mosley on my screen. Where did he go? Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. <laughs> Mr. Mosley, are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? I am. Where do you live? Roxbury. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I've never had a job outside of it. Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't have any further questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not. Thank you. I do not. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abutters meeting on June 21st. The proponents answered all questions. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, yes. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Frank Lopiccolo. Uh, my spouse and I own and reside in a condominium at 133 Seaport Boulevard, which is referred to as the Echelon Towers. Uh, the Echelon Campus is comprised of three residential towers, two of which are condo buildings with 447 units, one apartment tower, and multiple commercial units. The commercial units are located on both the ground and second floors spanning the entire block running from Seaport Boulevard, B Street, Congress Street, and Pier 4 Boulevard. Additional retail and commercial storefronts are housed in an interior courtyard called the Superette that, that the gentleman referred to. And the courtyard is enclosed, enclosed by the three residential towers. Patrons of the Garrett Bar would enter and exit through an alley off B Street and exit either via B Street or through the interior courtyard with exits on Seaport Boulevard or Pier 4 Boulevard in the late evening and early morning hours. The courtyard is dark, it's isolated and secluded in, in those early morning hours. Forgive me for taking your time to paint this picture, but I believe it's important to describe our surroundings in order to best understand our concerns. I have been to the abutters meeting. I have been to the Fort Court meeting. I've, re I've expressed these concerns uh, at both those meetings. Um, I have not received any uh, information relating to how Garrett Baz will handle the security, crowd control, loitering in the courtyard if any of you have been in this courtyard, you would see that in the evening hours, there are some benches and chairs, uh, and it's a prime spot for people to just be become unruly. Uh, and uh, I fear that the residents of the three towers will be subjected to some pretty dangerous surroundings. It's difficult for police or, or security personnel to patrol that area. So I, I guess uh, I would just ask that while we're not against Garrett Bars coming in, we would love to receive some assurances from them, guaranteed assurances from them that they will maintain security, uh, make sure that people do not linger within that courtyard in those early morning hours, and that they would do something to make certain that the residents feel safe. Uh, and uh, I would ask the, uh, the, co the committee to take that under advisement. Madam Chair, would you like us to respond? Please, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Mr. Lopiccolo. And he was present at our meetings. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, we are one of a number of retail and restaurant um, potential operators in facing this courtyard. It's a very large area which you can enter as was described from various points, uh, uh, you know, on Seaport Boulevard and on the side streets. It's a space which is, is home to, as I said, other retail and potential restaurant uses, very large kind of interior courtyard, which we are charged and responsible through our uh, lease with WS Development to maintain and, and, maintain and, and be safe and be well lit and well cared for. That's our job, that's our responsibility, and we certainly will intend to do that. This is a legitimate restaurant operator they have a solid background in operations. They understand where they are. They understand they are surrounded by residences, although I think it's very important to suggest that there is no actual street frontage for this restaurant. There are no apartments directly above this space, and there is only the garage for the properties below it. So they, have, they are protected noise-wise, we would think, uh, and they went through a very um, strict um, review with WS before they were granted the lease rights to come into the space. And again, they fully understand that they are in and around a residential area and will do everything 
possible to uh, perform at the highest possible level. And again, it's required of them uh, in their lease. And as you know, and the board knows, WS owns many properties in this district and they are not going to allow uh, renegade operators to come in and, and, and disrupt uh, the residential people living above. So we feel very comfortable being able to maintain order and uh, run a really good spot that'll be a benefit to the neighbors and the people in the building. And we look forward to that. Mr. Mosley, do you have anything you'd like to add? I do. Just to piggyback on that, Frank, I've heard your concerns. Uh, I hear your concerns. And I want to make sure that this is going to be a, a working relationship. I can uh, assure you that the onus is on the Garrett Bars and WS in collaboration. Uh, we have a member of WS here on the call as well, should she need to answer any questions. Uh, but we will work together to facilitate an easy enter and exit and noise control. And I want to make sure that we have each other's information and I'm a text and email away. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Frank. Thank you all. Were there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Okay. Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 22, Dorchester Market LLC, doing business as Dorchester Market, located at 951 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester. Has applied for a retail package, store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Accessory retail sales of wine and malt beverages for off-premise consumption in one room located inside a small new neighborhood grocery market of apparently 28, of approximately 2,800 square feet. One floor in a five-story building, Peter McGee manager, 11 p.m. closing hour. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, good morning, uh, Secretary Green, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Quilty Miller. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, may I begin? Absolutely. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you for this opportunity. I am here with uh, my clients, uh, Peter McGee and Adam Sarbaugh. Peter is the uh, longtime owner-operator, second generation of the Dorchester market which is a community-based um, small-scale uh, convenience market in the Savin Hill neighborhood. Uh, he is partnering with Adam Sarba, who is also the developer of this site. Um, this site is now under construction to be a new mixed-use development with 38 residential units and uh, ground floor space for the new Dorchester market um, was went through an extensive public review process. And just to highlight on uh, the concept and the requirements under the statute, uh, the finding of uh, character and fitness in the public need, we would suggest that this application uh, squarely complies uh, in an ideal way uh, with those two prongs that are required for the issuance of a license. We are seeking a beer and wine license, package store license, not a full alcohol license. You have the floor plans before you. The market, um, the new market is under construction. The prior market, which was at this site, um, was part of the demolition of the existing structure, had operated for 65 years uh, successfully, uh, a fixture in the neighborhood, community-based, um, you know, deli uh, convenience items. And what is being proposed is to now replace it with a more modern operation, but still operated by Mr. McGee uh, as a community-based asset. And it would be 2,800 square feet. Um, the proposal is accessory. We're not proposing a liquor store uh, in its entirety. We're proposing to have an accessory uh, retail element uh, which you'll see in the floor plan is pretty small scale with respect to the overall 2,800 square feet. Also introducing a new bakery concept. So this will um, this is distinct and apart from what we see in the immediate area that are, uh, there are a few other package stores in the area that are exclusively package stores. I would suggest more big box focus, uh, less distinct. We will have a small selection of more locally sourced uh, beers and wine, and uh, this will enable um, a community-based operator to enhance its operations into the future. We expect about eight months more of construction, at uh, which point uh, Mr. McGee would reopen uh, to the community in the spring, 
Uh, and as part of the public need that is required for showing for the issuance of the license, we submitted a memo for the board, Madam Chair. And I'll just give you the highlights on that. Um, this is very much supported by the data and the census growth. Dorchester is uh, the most populated neighborhood in the city of Boston um, at about over 120,000 residents. What's important to know is where it's going from here. The public need is rapidly expanding by virtue of economic and residential growth. Uh, not only do we have new residents at this site coming in, uh, but uh, within the area, we have um, over 3,000 new units uh, coming in, either approved or under construction, in addition to the very exciting um, Dorchester City uh, proposal Dorchester Bay City proposal uh, over on Morrissey and, and Mount Vernon. That's going to include new street connections as well. Um, multiple million square feet of development over almost 2000 new units and improved connectivity jobs. And so there is very much um, a public need and support based on the demographics for this um, distinct and small scale proposal for licensure. The final thing I would suggest, Madam Chair, is people are voting with their feet as well. So the public need uh, is displayed by the folks you'll hear and the letters that you have received. I wanna thank uh, District City Councilor Frank Baker for guiding us through a public process and their support. And we also wanna thank the uh, neighborhood group, the uh, Columbia Seven Hill Civic uh, for their support and guidance. And uh, we would suggest that the combination of this uh, makes for a compliant uh, public need and the character and fitness of Mr. McGee is unquestionable as someone who's operated in the community and also is familiar with the rules and regulations of this board for alcohol service. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Hanley. Um... I'm sorry, is Mr. McGee here? Oh, is that Peter? Yes, ma'am, with, with Adam Sarbaugh. Yep, they're together. Thank you. Um, and thank you for um, going over the um, elements that go into um, evaluating the character and fitness of a manager of record. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? At this time, thank you. If I may, Madam Chair, so um, Peter's also the um, manager of record on the application. I don't know if you need to quarry him on that, but um, or question him on that, but just to note that. Just in case I we missed them between your um, your presentation, um, yep. Mr. McGee, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes. Where do you live? Pembroke, Mass. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. And are, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the PCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No questions. All right, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Our office did host an abutters meeting on May 17th. Uh, there were a couple of neighbors who spoke in opposition concerned about the potential impact on neighboring uh, pack stores, but the um, majority of those that attended the meeting expressed their support for this proposal. Our office has received over 100 um, letters in support of Dorchester Market, as well as the owner, Peter. Um, and as you heard from the applicant's team, um, they received support from the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Julie Ryan from Boston City Council, Frank Baker's office. Our office would like to go on record in support of this application. The applicant led a thorough community process and has the support of his neighbors. The residents of this area are looking forward to have Peter in his market back in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, M Madam Chair, we actually have one of our neighbors with us right here. I'll just move the, the Zoom over. We have a nice group meeting here today. So I'll let Bruce speak. I'm Bruce Shatzloil, 26 Grant Street, number three. It's a block away from here. I just wanted to share with you, the Civic Association supported this, but a couple of us were involved in negotiating with Adam about keeping the market. And we're sorry it hasn't gotten built as quickly as we could between COVID and everything else. 
But um, there are 160 people in my list and network waiting for it to reopen in the neighborhood. It's also not just a market. It's been a community gathering place and place for jobs. Virtually everybody in Dorchester, including many of people who are in the city council, or not in city council, work for the city, have worked in this market over the years. Um, but the biggest thing is, it's also a butcher shop. And it's the only butcher shop with walking distance to all of us. And it's just really crucial we get this back. And I really encourage you to, um, to do this. We are already planning eight months out for the celebration and bringing people back. We had hundreds of people show up when it's closed. This is a community institution. And if anything should be supported to make it economically viable going into the future, this is one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, um, my name is Martin Brunswick. Uh, I would also, I would concur with the last speaker um, wholeheartedly. Uh, I am a 22 uh, year resident of Dorchester, a block away from the store. And um, just to, with all due respect uh, to attorney Hanley, uh, it, it is not, it, it is a full uh, grocery store, although it's very compact. Peter has always made it a community full grocery store um, and kept his meat and prices uh, very, very competitive, lower than star or shop, uh, stop and shop um, nearby, um, and has always uh, had his eye towards serving the community and the people in it uh, to the best of his ability and, um, um, and making the choices um, for what to sell that is economically viable and not making it a sort of a, a place to go um, uh, only as a last resort, but a place you can shop with every day for every meal. Uh, and be affordable within the community. And Peter is absolutely committed to, and Peter, you know, you can, I'm sure you agree, but if, you know, if I'm misspeaking, let me know. Um, uh, so this is not a convenience store. This is a full service grocery store uh, with a butcher, um, with high quality, uh, low cost meats um, uh, that, that are better than anything that you can get at any of the stores, uh, big box stores nearby. And um, and the, the quality of life in the neighborhood has, you know, notably uh, declined with, with the absence of this store, and we are all eagerly awaiting um, it coming back. Um, and I absolutely, absolutely, wholeheartedly support anything that uh, makes this store more viable for the future. And and uh, um, the, I think the beer and wine license um, is part of that uh, picture. Um, and the um, yeah, so that's what I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for hearing me. And I, again, I can't say enough how, how great that store was is for our neighborhood and how much we're looking forward to having it back. Thank you very much. Were there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Calling item number 23, Trinity Stewart Concessions LLC, doing business as the Raffles Hotel, located at 40 Trinity Place, has applied for an in-holder all-alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. A 35-floor hotel and residences of 400,000 square feet with six food outlets, function rooms, and lobby bar. Exclusive of condominium unit, unit marked University Club on floor plan. Officer Dudler, Oliver Dudler, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour, attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton from Upton, Connell, and Devlin. For the applicant, with me is Oliver Doodler, the proposed manager of record. He is a U.S. citizen. He is a mass resident in Wellesley. He has held leadership positions in hotels in both the United States and abroad, and he's familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Also with me is Jordan Warshaw, the developer and a principal in the concession entity. Uh, this application marks another step in the process of the building of the Raffles Hotel, which uh, is behind the John Hancock building above the old University Club, rising along the spine of the Mass Pike on the edge of the South End. Uh, the building is in construction, has been topped off. Uh, it is the product and subject of extensive community meetings over the last eight to 10 years with the Impact Advisory Group and the additional process with the BPDA. We've also had several license specific processes. Uh, we met with NAB, who's expressed no opposition. Uh, we've consulted with Councillor Flynn, 
Uh, we consulted with Molly Griffin of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, who indicated because of the location and because it's a hotel, it did not need an abutters meeting. Uh, I also confirmed that with Connor Newman after Molly Griffin left the office. Uh, for your information, we are seeking an in-holder license for the whole building. There are five uh, alcohol service outlets. One of them will be a fine dining restaurant for which we will select a local fine dining chef. And that has not happened yet, but when it does, if we are granted a license, when that does happen, we will come back to the board to incorporate that operator under a management agreement for the existing license. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to introduce uh, Jordan Washaw, the developer and a, a principal in the concession entity, to just give you a little bit of an overview of what's inside the hotel. Hi, um, um, Madam Chairman, members of the board, thank you for having us with you today. Um, this hotel, which has been in planning since 2012, we're in year 10 now, is a 35 story building as uh, I won't repeat everything Andrew has said about the um, about the full composition of the building, but it's got 147 hotel rooms, 108 condominiums, 38 pied a terre condominiums, which are smaller studio condominiums. The food and beverage outlets um, on the first and second floor are our primary restaurant, which will be an approximately 170 to 200 seat restaurant on two levels. Um, there will also be a patisserie cafe coffee shop a much smaller facility on the first floor. Um, we have a sky lobby in the building on the 17th floor, which will have a smaller um, restaurant that will be about 50 to 55 seats. We'll have um, a so-called long bar, which is a signature bar of the uh, of Raffles Hotels around the world um, with the connected um, roof terrace bar. And then our last food and beverage outlet is a speakeasy. Um, I think one of America's, if not the only um, 200 foot in the sky speakeasy, which is a smaller bar that will be open um, in the evenings until, until late night, hoping to help with the city's effort to bring a little bit of late night energy back to the city by being open a little bit later than some of the other outlets. So that's our program. And with that, we're glad to answer any questions. Thank you, um, Attorney Upton. And thank you, Mr. Warshaw. Um, so we have five service outlets, one of which is fine dining. Are all of the other ones open to the public or will they, some of them be just for the residents of the condos? All of the outlets that we discussed are for the public. Okay. Um, and when you said the speakeasy will be late night later than the other places, will that be the 2 a.m. closing or what were you thinking there? Yes, yes. We're, we're applying for a 2 a.m. license for the full building. It's not expected that our restaurants will be serving until 2. I mean, maybe if things really do change around here, that could happen, but we don't envision that in the short term. But our hope is that the speakeasy and maybe at some point the long bar as well will be open at least on weekends and until then. Okay. Um, and thank you, um, Mr. Doodler, for joining us. Um, the, your attorney did cover the questions that we consider when considering the character and fitness of the um, manager of record. Um, and when would you be expecting to open? Our, our goal is to be open by the second quarter of next year. Uh, that's, I, I don't have any further questions. Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? I do not. Or Commissioner Saxon? I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, as you heard from the applicants team, uh, Andrew mentioned that they did uh, community outreach with the local civic association as well as the uh, district council. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. 
Good morning, Madam Holy Chair, members of the board. <clears throat> Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I do already see a raised hand from Conrad Armstrong. I'll ask you to unmute and you may testify. I'm Conrad Armstrong from 439 Marlboro Street, representing the Neighborhood Association Back Bay. The applicant met with us and NAB does not oppose this application. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 24, Bedford Dining Inc. doing business as Whitehorse Tavern located at 116 through 120 Brighton Ave in Alston. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Full Revolution LLC at the same location. Eric Brady, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Attorney Carolyn Conway. Attorney Conway. Thank you, Attorney Green. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm joined today with uh, Mr. Derek Brady, who is the proposed uh, major investor in the licensee and also the proposed manager of record. Uh, the board knows that the White Horse Tavern has been almost an institution in the Brighton area. And uh, Mr. Brady actually began his career with Mr. Bacon, who is the owner of the White Horse Tavern. This is pre pretty much a strictly straight to straight corporate transfer. There are no plans to change the capacity or the configuration of the premises. Um, and what it's going to happen is, is Mr. Brady is going to come in. We're going to twerk the, uh, the cosmetics of the place, uh, continue with its American cuisine, hope, uh, hopefully upgrade a bit, put in a, put in a great management team and continue to operate the, um, the restaurant pretty much as is. We do expect soon we might be back with a, a new DBA. We haven't decided that yet, but right now, as I said, this is just a, um, a corp to corp transfer to Mr. to Mr. Brady and Mr. Raji Pine, who's also his, um, his, his partner. As you know, Mr. Brady is already a, a licensed manager by this board over at, at Metro Dining. And he will be setting up his office in this space and it, it intends to make it his really is basically his home base. And we're happy to answer any questions. Mr. Brady is available to answer any questions as well. Thank you, Attorney Conway. And thank you for joining us, Mr. Brady. Um, I'm gonna go over the manager of record questions that we ask everyone who appears before us to determine the character and fitness of the applicant to serve as a manager of record. Mr. Brady, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes. Where do you live? Wellesley. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. What is your experience? Um, I have about 28 years experience. I started working for Doug Bacon at the White Horse Tavern when he opened it, or uh, just before at the last drop and moved to the White Horse Tavern when he opened it. And um, I now operate, own and operate nine other establishments. Uh, I don't operate them all. I operate um, a couple of them that I'm the manager on record, two in Boston and one in Wellesley and one in Newton. Okay. So I'm going over your application um, here, one second. Sure. Um, it says that you, let's find this. Sorry, I have a million screens up. Um, on page four of your application of the transfer, question six reads, have you have any of the disclosed licenses listed ever been suspended, revoked, or canceled? And the first license listed is Metro Dining. Where is that located? Alston, Mass. And what is that commonly known as? The draft. And how long have you had that license? I believe 18 years. Okay. On your application for the transfer, it says in response to the column asking for the dates of the suspensions, revocations, or cancellations, you answer various. Does this mean you've had various dates that this license has been suspended, revoked, or canceled? Uh, I believe so. I don't recall. It's been a long time. 
okay, uh, I'll pull it up. Um, I have all of it in front of me. Actually, on the application, which I'm guessing you looked at, there's a column that asks for the reasons the license was suspended, revoked, or canceled, and you or your attorney answered serving minors, disturbance on premises. Can you describe this or can your attorney? Well, there have been several incidents over, over the course of the years. We have um, had a, uh, an incident, I remember, where there were two minors and also another incident where there was a disturbance on the premises. Um, and that's what is referenced in the in answer to that question. Okay, uh, I'm looking at the docket sheet for this license in 2012, the ABCC voted to suspend your license indefinitely and disapproved your request for a change in manager. Then they suspended your license for 100 days. What incident was this? It looks like that suspension was lifted and there was an approved compromise where you paid $73,000. Can you elaborate on that? That was a minor's incident that we paid the fine from the ABCC, I believe. A minor incident, a minor's incident that resulted in a hundred day suspension. No, I can I can refer to that. It was, it was the application that was filled out for the license transfer didn't didn't have some information on there that they needed um, regarding um, my inf my personal information, and that's why they 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 uh, cited that that fine and in closure until it was rectified. Okay, but you paid $73,000? Yes. In October 2013, you had your license suspended for overcrowding on the patio. On, October, on August 2014, you were written up again for overcrowding on your patio and received another suspension, and at the same time received a warning for installing a bar on the patio without permission from this board. In 2016, the ABCC suspended your license for six days for minors in possession. Um, 2017, an employee was seated at the bar consuming a bottle of beer at 3.30 a.m. After a 2 a.m. closing time in 2020, um, there was a violation connected to a September 2019 incident where a person under 21 was in possession of the alcohol on the premise um, board notes noted the incident and sent correspondence to the to the licensee. Twenty twenty two, there was a violation um, for employee on patron assault and battery employee on patron, which resulted in a one day suspension. And this board requested the licensee submit a security and operations and training plan. And you served a one day suspension. So you're, you said you're gonna put a good man management team in place at this new location, um, which I will get to, but I'm gonna move on to some of the other um, licenses, licenses that are listed on your application. West End Dining, um, that's 65 Causeway Street, is that right? Yep. The application yes. says, are you the manager of record there? I'm not. Okay. There was an employee assault on patron um, on this docket sheet as well. But on the application, it says overcrowded, overcrowding violations of COVID-19 regulations. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, See, this is license 98977. Um, As I recall, I think you suspended the license for the COVID-19 violation. And yeah. then somebody come in and shut down the draft by accident. Also. That's right, yeah. So, say resolution, resolution. Um, a couple other suspension, uh, fines and suspensions. Um, I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's see. 
I think the only other one that my my name is the manager on record would be uh, Brood Intentions LLC, which is the fourth wall. Okay. Are you I mean, also manager of record for Center Group LLC? Center Group LLC, yeah, that's in Newton. That's also on your application that um, it says you were either suspended, revoked, or canceled for serving minors. What was that? It was an underage drinking violation. Okay, what was the um, what was the outcome of that? Uh, there was a suspension for it. Um, yeah, do you want to know the incident? What happened yeah. with the incident? Yeah, yeah so curious about all this. U Union Street in Newton operates mostly as a restaurant and um, it's near Boston College and there was some college kids in there drinking and we got the violation for the college kids in there. It's not often that we see a lot of college kids there, but since then we've, we've changed our protocols on how we handle the situation at checking IDs in the door. Okay. Um, so back to the draft, we had asked for a security and operations plan for your violation earlier this year. Um, I don't see it in our file. We'd like we, you to submit that before we contemplate we, this transfer. In your yeah. We hadn't finished it yet because we hadn't finished getting everything ready for it. We just changed we just changed our protocols to have people take a course, a training course on um, how to handle um, situations and de-escalation. So that's why we changed we've changed our protocols on that. Okay. And Causeway um, Causeway Union, um, are you the manager of record there? No, I'm not. And what's your ownership interest in that establishment? I believe 11%. I'm not positive though. I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but I think it's about 11%. Okay. Um, it was an assault and battery employee on Patreon recently. What's the status of that? The status of the assault and battery? Of, of the establishment, can you- I can give you, I can answer you. We are, it, we've been, we've been processed as Mr. Brady has said that we just went, went underwent a, um, a, a full training uh, protocol with all of our staff as to um, how to handle everything from A to Z. And we're planning on petitioning the board to reopen. We have a new manager of record, uh, the application that's ready to be filed. And we have complete new protocols for that licensee. So anybody who is has was connected with that assault and battery is no longer uh, part of the, uh, the operation of the premises. Okay, so Attorney Conway, you described at the beginning of your presentation that he's gonna set up his office at this location and put in place a good management team. Could you share with the board what, Mr. Brady, what your idea of is a, of a good management team and what you plan on doing? Me, me personally, so, I mean, a good management team, a team that has oversight of the place. I'm sorry. Okay. I, just, I just read off a litany of violations for licenses that you have an interest in or that you manage. So I'm not convinced that you have the ability to put together a good management team. So I'd like you to kind of tease that out for the, me and my fellow commissioners so we can learn a little bit more about that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I like, again, like I said, so I, I'd be sitting in the, in the establishment day to day. Uh, my office would be there and I'd be part of the management team and the oversight. Um, as far as experience would go, I'm sure we'd, we'd interview and, and go through the person individually to make sure they have the experience and the demeanor and, and the intelligence to be the right management for the, for the establishment. Um, we would run uh, our, our reference checks and our quarry checks on each person that we would hire and we would, um, and we would train them um, through our own staff and through outside staff outside sources, which we've already started to, to use. And, and what's the, um, what's the marketing plan for this location? The marketing plan? Um, a bar, a club, a fine dining restaurant? 
oh, what, what you mean, what we would try to shoot for as far as it'd be a casual dining establishment. Um, uh, it's not, not a club, not a nightclub. Um, a lo- very similar to what it is, um, just a casual atmosphere where people can enjoy um, good food and, 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 good, and, and good atmosphere. Okay, I'm just taking notes here. So how many um, alcohol licenses in the state of Massachusetts do you have an ownership interest in? Um, I know there's at least one in Wellesley because Wellesley called this board last summer yep. before, before that uh, Eight. Eight, you have an ownership interest in eight alcohol licenses, okay. And are they all open and running right now? Uh, all but one. Okay, I am going to give Commissioner Curran an opportunity to ask some questions and then Commissioner Saxon. Uh, Madam Chair, I think you covered a lot of ground there. I'm going to uh, hold my questions for the moment. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. 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 Do you have any oh, questions? Um, yeah, do you plan on using any of the same staff? The staff that you used um, in the past, do you plan on carrying any of them over to this new establishment? Uh, no. So we plan on a whole new staff. Um, the staff that was existing in the establishment, uh, Doug is using at a other establishment that he's looking to try to open or has already, I'm not sure. Um, so we would hire a whole new staff. Any further questions from the board? Not at this time. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer judgment to the board. Um, background information on the community process, the applicant uh, and their team met with the Austin Civic Association, which is the active civic group for that area, um, and presented uh, no concerns were raised by the civic. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I'm sorry, Connor, did you say there was a community meeting? Uh, so they, they met with the uh, Neighborhood Association. Okay. The Austin Civic Association. We were informed that an abutters meeting wasn't, wasn't necessary, so that's why we, we went with the ACA. Great. Uh, Chairman Dress, do you have anything further to add, or is that it? That's it. Thank you. Great. If there's no further testimony, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now go back. There were a few establishments who were not here for first call. We'll go back and take a second call. Uh, I'm told that item number four, Supreme House of Pizza, has withdrawn their application, so we will not take a second call there. Uh, is anybody with us from Mastro's Ocean Club, item number eight on this morning's agenda? Yes, uh, Connell Larkins here. Great, thank you. Let me just read this back into the record and then we will get underway. Item number eight, Boston Ocean Club, LLC, doing business as Mastro's Ocean Club. Located at 22 Liberty Drive, holder of a common bachelor seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Sophia Boyd to Connor Larkin. And thank you for being with us, Mr. Larkin. Uh, Chairman Joyce, if you would like to proceed with the manager of record questions. Mr. Larkin, are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes, I am. Where do you live? Uh, Saugus, Massachusetts. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the agency, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. I have no further questions. Commissioner Curran or Saxon, do you? Nothing further for me, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. And thank you again, Mr. Larkin, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody present from Smashburger? Yes, Rachel Cirillo. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just read this back into the record and then we'll proceed to item number nine, Smashburger Acquisition Boston LLC doing business as Smashburger. Located at 545 Boylston Street, holder of a common vigil or seven-day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, 
has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Jera and Turner to Rachel Cirillo. All right, Chairman uh, Joyce, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining us, Rachel. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. And where do you live? Arlington, Massachusetts. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. I have no further questions. Commissioner Sachs or Karen, do you? None for me, thank you. I, I do not, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. And thank you once again for joining us, Ms. Rillo. Thank you. Those are all of the items before the board today. Thank you, everybody. This concludes this morning's hearing.